ऑल आउट ब्लॉक बस्टर इन झारखंड फर्स्ट एवर हंट फॉर अ सिटिंग चीफ मिनिस्टर आफ्टर फोर्टी वन आवर्स ऑफ कैट एंड माउस विथ ईडी झारखंड सीएम सोरेन सर्फिस इन रांची ईडी सोर्सेस क्लेम इनफ प्रूफ फॉर अरेस्ट every twist in hunt for cm sorin top focus on five live emon sorin the sitting chief minister of jharkhand could be arrested at any time by the enforcement directorate he was missing for over a day he's emerged in ranchi He's held meetings with his cabinet. His wife could be the next chief minister according to some buzz from the ground, but this could be the arrest of Hemant Soren happening very very quickly. I'm Shiv, this is 5 Live. Let's go straight to the headlines. Soren resurfaces after missing for over 40 hours. His party the JMM claims Soren is being treated like a criminal. Big buzz over whether Soren will make wife Kalpana the chief minister. Land for job scam haunts Lalu family after RJD Supremo his son Tejasvi is grilled by the enforcement directorate. Opposition cries witch hunt by central agencies. Big political showdown after BJP wins Chandigarh mayoral polls the first big electoral test after the formation of the India Alliance Aam Aadmi Party and Congress cry foul after eight votes which would have got them a victory have been invalidated Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann calls it murder of democracy Rahul Gandhi hits out at Nitish Kumar says we don't need him because he makes u turns after just a little pressure meanwhile Congress and Trinamool continue to snipe at each other just before rahul returns to bengal in his bus kerala court hands death sentence to 15 popular front of india members in a bjp neta's murder case ranjit was hacked to death in 2021 at his alappura home And on the Chandigarh mayoral election results, Aam Aadmi Party chief Arvind Kejriwal, whose party has lost, is speaking. Machine का दिखाया जाता है, उसके बाद वोट जब उसको total किया जाता है, machine का दिखाया जाता है, भाई किस party को कितने वोट मिले, सब कुछ दिखाया जाता है, और सारी partyों के agent बकायदा अच्छे से देखते हैं। यहाँ भी procedure ये था, कानून में ये था कि हर party का agent वहाँ बैठेगा। और पार्टी का एजेंट को जैसे दिल्ली में भी एमसीडी के चुनाव हुए एमसीडी के मेयर का चुनाव हुआ वो भी बैलेट पेपर से होता है तो वो सारे एजेंट बैठते हैं एक एक वोट बकायदा सभी एजेंट्स को दिखाए जाते हैं अगर किसी एजेंट को कोई आपत्ति करनी हो भाई ये वोट इनवैलिड है तो वो सबको दिखाया जाता है अगर कोई एजेंट कहता है ये वोट इनवैलिड है सबको दिखाया जाता है सब उस पर अपने अपने तर्क देते हैं और प्रिसाइडिंग ऑफिसर अपनी उस पर रूलिंग देता है एक तरह से क्वासी जुडिशियल वो करता है कि उस पर रूलिंग देता है इन महाशय ने जो इनके पदाधिकारी बीजेपी के आदमी थे प्रिसाइडिंग ऑफिसर थे इन्होंने आज किसी एजेंट को अपने पास नहीं आने दिया इन्होंने सारे एजेंट्स को दूर धकेल दिया और खुद ही सारी वोट लेके बैठ गए और बकायदा कैमरे के अंदर दिखाई दे रहा है कि किस तरह से वोट जो हमारे वोट थे उनके ऊपर वो टिक मार्क करके उसको इनवैलिड मतलब दो टिक मार्क लग गए तो ये वोट इनवैलिड हो जाएगा वो टिक मार्क करके इनवैलिड करते जा रहे हैं और फिर नीचे साइन कर रहे हैं कुछ वोट पे मात्र साइन कर रहे हैं और कुछ वोट पे एक टिक मार्क और लगा रहे हैं वो साफ साफ वीडियो में दिखाई दे रहा तो छत्तीस वोट पड़ने थे छत्तीस में सोलह इनके थे बीस हमारे थे सोलह इनके पड़ गए सोलह इनके पक्ष में पड़े बीस में से आठ वोट जो हमारे थे वो आठ वोट इन्होंने कैंसिल कर दिए इनवैलिड डिक्लेयर कर दिए यानी कि 36 में से आठ वोट मतलब 25 परसेंट वोट इनवैलिड डिक्लेयर कर दिए ये कौन सा चुनाव हुआ 
पिछले साल जब चुनाव हुए थे तो हमारा एक वोट इनवैलिड डिक्लेयर हुआ था तो ऐसा तो नहीं कि हमारे वालों को वोट डालना नहीं आता वोट तो डालना आता है पिछली बार भी डाला था इस बार भी डाला है इस बार कैसे ऐसा हो गया कि सारे वोट डालना भूल गए हमारे वाले सारे वोट इनवैलिड हो गए तो पहले से सोच के आए थे कि इनको गुंडागर्दी मचानी है किस्मत अच्छी थी कि कैमरे के अंदर सब कुछ पकड़ा गया बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग चीज है कि चुनाव के पहले कल ऑर्डर जारी करके चंडीगढ़ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ने मीडिया की एंट्री बैन कर दी तो इसका मतलब नीयत तो शुरू से ही खराब थी प्लान तो षड्यंत्र तो पहले से ही बना रखा था इन लोगों ने कि गड़बड़ करनी है <coughs> इतने बड़े स्तर के ऊपर चंडीगढ़ के मेयर के चुनाव के लिए आज तक कभी भी इतनी वोट इनवैलिड नहीं डिक्लेयर की गई 36 में से 8 वोट इनवैलिड मतलब 25 परसेंट वोट अगर इनसे 36 वोट काउंट करने में इतनी बड़ी धांधली कर रहे हैं देश का जब बड़ा चुनाव होगा उसमें तो 90 करोड़ वोट पड़ते हैं उसमें तो पता नहीं किस लेवल की धांधली करते हैं ये लोग और 25 परसेंट क्या अगर उस चुनाव में तो पांच छह परसेंट की भी वोट अगर इधर उधर हो जाए तो सब तो आज का चुनाव ये दिखाता है कि किस तरह से ये जीतने के लिए सत्ता पाने के लिए किसी भी हद तक जा सकते हैं बड़े चुनाव में लोग तो कह रहे हैं ईवीएम 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 तो होगा ही होगा गड़बड़ मुझे लगता है ये कुछ भी करते होंगे वोटो वोटर लिस्ट ये फर्जीवाड़ा करते हैं फर्जी वोट डलवाते होंगे ये ये ईवीएम करवाते होंगे सब कुछ करते होंगे जीतने के लिए और मैं ये सोच रहा था कि अगर भगवान की दया से उसके बावजूद भी अगर ये नहीं जीते और हार गए तो ये ट्रंप की तरह कुर्सी नहीं छोड़ेंगे फिर ये मतलब उस दिन कुर्सी से चिपके रहेंगे चाहे मार्शल लॉ लागू करना पड़े देश में ये कुर्सी नहीं छोड़ने वाले तो ये देश के लिए जो आज दिखा पूरे देश के अंदर पूरे देश ने देखा सारे मीडिया ने चलाया ये बहुत खतरनाक है और हम सब लोगों को जो जो लोग इस देश से प्यार करते हैं हम सब लोगों को इसका पुरजोर विरोध करना है और इस इन सबको रोकना है ये सारे जो आसार दिखाई दे रहे हैं ये इसी तरफ इंगित करते हैं कि बहुत बड़े स्केल के ऊपर कुछ तो गड़बड़ है अगर एक 10 बाई 10 किलोमीटर का छोटा सा शहर चंडीगढ़ उस चंडीगढ़ के छोटे से शहर के अंदर एक छोटे से मेयर का चुनाव उसके अंदर अगर ये इस किस्म तक इस हद तक नहीं गिर सकते हैं तो बड़े चुनाव के लिए तो किसी भी हद तक जा सकते हैं देखिए अभी जो कई सारे मैंने देखे हैं वीडियोस कई सारे उसके ऊपर एक दिन अलग से चर्चा कर सकते हैं चर्चा अच्छी चल रही है और बहुत जल्दी मुझे लगता है कि हमारे भी कुछ ना कुछ नतीजे आएंगे कई राउंड ऑफ डिस्कशन हो चुके हैं पवन बंसल थे अभी बैठे थे तो जो भी करने की जरूरत पड़ेगी वो करेंगे आज मेरा मकसद चंडीगढ़ का मेयर इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है देश के लिए चंडीगढ़ का मेयर आम आदमी पार्टी का बने इसका बने उसका बने इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है पर इम्पोर्टेंट है जो लोग गुंडागर्दी करके चुनाव जीतेंगे वो गुंडागर्दी का ही प्रशासन लेके आएंगे वो आपके शहर में गुंडागर्दी मचवाएंगे जो ईमानदारी से वोट जीतेंगे ईमानदारी से चुनाव लड़ेंगे वो शासन में ईमानदारी लेके आएंगे आज इन्होंने जिस तरह से सरेआम गुंडागर्दी अरे वोट आपके वोट जो वो अधिकारी है प्रेजाइडिंग ऑफिसर उसके खिलाफ तो फोर्जरी का फ्रॉड का सेडिशन का मुकदमे चलने चाहिए नॉन बिलेबल ऑफेंस है उसने फ्रॉड करके सबके वोट बदल दिए उसने ये कैसे परमिसेबल है जनतंत्र तो सुप्रीम है वोट तो एक तरह से बहुत सेक्रोसेंट है किसी का भी वोट आपने काउंसिलर्स के वोट बदल दिए काउंसिलर्स के वोट पे टिक मार्क करते जा रहे हो और साइन करते जा रहे हो टिक मार्क करते ये क्या है सरयाम गुंडागर्दी ना वोट को मानते ना किसी प्रोसेस को मानते ना कानून को मानते ना संविधान को मानते आपका कहना है कि ईडी इतने बड़े स्तर पे कार्रवाई क्यों कर रही है मैं आपसे ही पूछना चाहता हूँ कि क्यों कर रही है 
एक इन्होंने माहौल ये बनाया पूरे देश के अंदर अब राम मंदिर का वो उद्घाटन हो गया राम मंदिर का अब तो इतनी सीट आएंगी और इतनी सीट आएंगी अगर इतनी सीट आ ही रही थी तो ईडी की क्या जरूरत थी फिर फिर ये सब नौटंकी करने की क्या जरूरत थी इसका मतलब इतनी सीट नहीं आ रही है इसका मतलब ईडी की भी जरूरत है फर्जीवाड़े की भी जरूरत है गुंडागर्दी करने की भी जरूरत है तब सीट आ, आएंगी इनकी अगर अपने आप सीट आ रही होती तो क्यों करते ये इतना सारा क्यों ईडी पीछे भेजते क्यों नीतीश जी को तोड़ते क्यों उधर एनसीपी तोड़ते क्यों शिवसेना तोड़ते क्यों सबके पीछे ईडी छोड़ते ये इसलिए कर रहे हैं क्योंकि इनकी सीटें नहीं आ रही हैं लोग इनसे परेशान हो चुके हैं लोग फेडअप हो चुके हैं इंडिया गठबंधन की सीट शेयरिंग ठीक से हो गई तो इंडिया गठबंधन इनको आज अगर चुनाव ईमानदारी से हो जाता इंडिया गठबंधन का सीधा सीधा था 16 वोट इनके थे 20 हमारे थे हम इंडिया गठबंधन की पहली जीत होती लेकिन ये तो इस तरह से गुंडागर्दी करके बेईमानी करके चुनाव जीत रहे सीधा सीधा था आज का चुनाव तो बड़ा सिंपल और स्ट्रेट था हमारा एक भी आदमी नहीं बिका बीस वोट थे हमारे इनके सोलह वोट थे तो आज का चुनाव तो इंडिया गठबंधन जीत ही रहा था तो फिर गुंडागर्दी करके इन्होंने इसको कर लिया वो एक बहुत अलग बहुत बड़ा मुद्दा है किसी दिन बात करेंगे आपसे ही में एक कंडीशन है इंडिया ब्लॉक की पिछली बैठक में आप लोगों ने तय किया था कि इलेक्शन कमीशन के पास डेलीगेशन जाएगा और जो वीवीपैट से पर्चियां होती हैं उसको बैलेट पेपर के तौर मेरे ख्याल से इंडिया गठबंधन की तरफ से रिप्रेजेंटेशन भेजा जा चुका है तो उस पर मुझे उम्मीद नहीं है कि ये लोग कुछ कार्रवाई करेंगे इलेक्शन के लिए जिसको आप कह रहे हैं सिर्फ एक चंडीगढ़ का छोटा सा इलेक्शन था उसके लिए खुद जेपी नड्डा जी ने बधाई दी है और ये कहा है कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी की जो लीडरशिप है उसकी वजह से यूपी में जो है जेपी नड्डा जी से पूछिए कि आठ वोट इनवैलिड किस बेसिस पे किए उन्होंने उनसे पूछिए कि क्या उनके पदाधिकारी ने जिस तरह से वोट्स को टेम्पर किया फोर्जरी की क्या वो इसको सही मानते हैं क्या वो इस तरह की प्रैक्टिसेस को इलेक्टोरल मैल प्रैक्टिस को चुनाव के दौरान इस तरह की बेईमानी को सही मानते हैं और क्या वो इस तरह से पाई गई जीत को सही मानते हैं क्या वो इसको अनैतिक नहीं मानते क्या वो इसको देश के लिए नुकसानदेह नहीं मानते क्या केवल ये इन केन प्रकार जीतना उनके लिए सब कुछ है मार के पीट के वोट टेम्पर करके सब कुछ करके बस जीत जाओ किसी भी तरह से सर कल जिस तरह से हेमंत सोरेन को लेकर खबरें आ रही थी कि ईडी एक तरह से हंट पे दिख रही थी लगातार खबरें प्लांट भी हो रही थी और दावा किया जा रहा था हेमंत सोरेन गायब हो गए तो एक मुख्यमंत्री के बारे में जिस तरह से एजेंसियां काम कर रही हैं आपको लगता है आने वाले समय में कार्रवाई और बढ़ने वाली है इंडिया ब्लॉक के लीडर्स के खिलाफ मुझे लगता है लोकसभा के पहले जिस तरह से इनका माहौल है इनको मेजोरिटी नहीं मिल रही है इंडिया गठबंधन स्ट्रांग है आज आप मेरे से निकवा लीजिए जो कुछ इन्होंने बिहार के अंदर किया पिछली बार इन्होंने सत्रह सीट दी थी नीतीश जी को सत्रह सीट पे लड़ी थी बीजेपी सत्रह की सत्रह इस, इस बार भी ये सत्रह सीट दें अगर नीतीश कुमार जी को सत्रह की सत्रह सीटें नीतीश कुमार जी हारेंगे उन्होंने बीज उन्होंने बिहार की जनता के साथ धोखा किया तो बीजेपी को इसका नुकसान होने वाला इस तरह की हरकतें दे, ये देश पसंद नहीं करता ईमानदारी से लड़ो चुनाव अगर आप जीते हो आप लड़ जीतो कोई और जीते कोई जिसकी सरकार बने उसको चलाने थैंक यू Arvind Kejriwal of the Aam Aadmi Party saying that this is the murder of democracy he says that uh, this election victory has been stolen from the India Alliance this would have been the first victory of the India Alliance uh, between the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress party but that the BJP has sunk to new lows to steal this election uh, Kamal Jeet I want to get down to the facts of the case uh, you know eight votes were invalidated if those votes were not invalidated the India alliance of AAP and Congress would have won this election uh, what are, you know what are the officers there saying why were these votes invalidated and what happens next is this a fair process
Well, the Chandigarh mayor elections may have been small, but uh, it has turned out to be a topsy-turvy and unprecedented controversy taking place. And obviously, the numbers were with the Ahmadi Party Congress Alliance. Uh, they were very confident that they're going to win the mayor and the deputy mayor. Uh, but that's not what it is. Uh, you know, uh, at least on camera and everything, uh, what could be seen is the man who's in the center of this entire controversy is Anil Masi, uh, the presiding officer. He's also the minority head and also a BJP nominated councillor. Now, mm. he was seen scribbling even on the camera. Now, this is being alleged that that is the reason why the votes turned invalid. Uh, just about last time around the elections took place, there were only two invalid votes. Meanwhile, this time around, it was eight, which is 25% of the votes, which has actually turned the elections around in favor of the BJP and uh, none of the BJP votes has been invalid. So this is what uh, is going to be contested in the court. Now the Ahmadi party and Congress have already knocked on the doors of Punjab and Haryana High Court and the directions had already been given by them and the date was already set as 30th Feb uh, January by them and now that the election process as they are alleging hmm. has been unfair and what is being seen on camera is very clear Shiv that there was some sort of scribbling done. Now whether it was just a simple signature as was mandated yeah. Yeah. or was there some sort of a manipulation will be decided by the court but meanwhile what was touted as one of the biggest victories for the Aam Admi Party Congress doer has turned out to be a major setback uh, even though we've been speaking to Raghav Chadda and he said no no this is not a setback this is a manipulation which has been done but meanwhile the jury is very much out there okay the jury is out there I hope the agencies in the court get to the bottom of it we can't have a stolen election if that is indeed what has happened in Chandigarh. The Ahmadbi Party and the Congress have every right to feel disgruntled about what has happened and hopefully they will take recourse like they have to the courts to get this matter sorted out. We'll give you an update on that story very, very soon. Well, this was very, very high drama that unfolded in Chandigarh that Kamaljit was just talking about after the BJP appeared to score a win against the India bloc in the mayoral elections. If you're wondering why the mayor elections in Chandigarh are so important in making headline news on Five Live? Well, because this was the first confrontation between the India Alliance comprising the Congress and the Ahmadbi Party and the BJP. So the first big face-off between the two sides but now it has ended with the Ahmadbi Party and Congress combined being defeated which they claim is not the case. Take a look at the report. Ruckus inside the assembly. Marshals called in to control the situation. Scenes of councillors in tears after the first drubbing for the India bloc. These were the dramatic scenes witnessed at Chandigarh today after the declaration of mural polls. In a big upset, BJP's Manoj Sonkar was declared the mayor of Chandigarh after he won the mayoral polls with 16 votes against the 12 votes backed by the Congress Ahmadmi Party candidate Kuldeep Tita. ये सरयाम सिद्धा सिद्धा सी लोकतंत्र की हत्या है जैसे कि आपने देखा है जीत नहीं है ये उनकी हार है हमारी 20 वोटें पड़ी हैं पूरी उन्हें 16 पड़ी हैं उन्होंने हमारी 8 वोटें इनवैलिड करा कर दी हैं किस कारण वे इसकी गई ये भी नहीं बताया गया उनकी इस तरह से वो हार है इंडिया गठबंधन की जीत है वो वीडियोग्राफी में सरयाम दिख रहा है कि कैसे परसेंटेज ऑफिसर के सैन करते हुए हाथ भी हिल रहे हैं और वो टिक मार कैसे कर रहा है बट हियर्स द ट्विस्ट एट वोट्स वर डिक्लेयर्ड इनवैलिड which led to opposition leaders raising allegations of rigging and taking the fight to court. Jo gair kanuni kaam, jo illegality, Chandigarh mayor chunav mein dekhi hai, usse sirf aur sirf rashtra droh, rashtra droh kaha ja sakta hai. Congress party, Ahmadmi party milkar bethe gi, aage kya sadak se lekar, कोर्ट से लेकर संसद तक क्या लड़ाई लड़नी है उसकी रूपरेखा बनाएंगे और अवश्य न्यायपालिका का दरवाजा भी जरूर खटकाएंगे। But even before the results were declared, there was ruckus after a one-hour delay in the voting process. The Chandigarh mayoral polls has been a high-voltage battle as it was considered the first litmus test for the India bloc. The loss has further weakened the opposition, which is already on the edge of collapse after Nitish Kumar walked out and joined hands with NDA. Bureau Report, India Today.
And it's the big breaking story that India today broke earlier today and is leading with, this is the latest update, the arrest of serving Jharkhand Chief Minister Hemant Soren could take place at any time now. The Enforcement Directorate claims there's compelling evidence against Chief Minister Soren implicating him in a land scam, illegal mining and coal mining in the state of Jharkhand. Top ED sources are telling India today there are links between Chief Minister Hemant Soren and illegal mining activities in Jharkhand and that these linkages have been officially established in the course of the investigation. We're also hearing from our sources in the investigating agency that documentary evidence has been established to link Hemant Soren with Benami properties bought using proceeds of this alleged crime. Soren, remember, was missing for about 40 hours. He re-emerged in Ranchi, the capital of Jharkhand, after being untraceable for nearly two days. When asked by a reporter where he was, Soren replied, in your heart. Well, that reply to a reporter who was wondering where he had been for the last 40 hours. Well, he has re-emerged. He's held a long meeting with his cabinet. His chief minister, his, uh, his uh, spokespersons have spoken, calling this vendetta and that he is being treated like a criminal. Listen in to him and Surin. And just to refresh all of our viewers about this particular case, watch this report. Here's what the Enforcement Directorate claims it has on him and Soren. Went missing for 41 hours. Jharkhand's chief minister made a dramatic appearance at his Ranchi home on Tuesday. Hemant Soren at the center of ED investigations. As his whereabouts remained unknown, the enforcement directorate seized two BMWs, 36 lakh in cash and documents during searches at Soren's official residence in New Delhi late Monday. The ED investigating at least three cases of money laundering. Investigators suspect his involvement in illegal mining and land deals. The sources are saying at this point of time they have gathered huge amount of evidence against Solomon Soren in all three money laundering cases. The illegal mining case, the coal scam case and the land scam case. But before making the arrest, ED sources claim that they want to give one more chance to Heyman Soren so that he can defend himself and later on, after the questioning, they will decide whether to call Heyman Soren once again for questioning or whether he should be placed under arrest. After his arrival in Ranchi, purportedly from Delhi, the Jharkhand CM met MLAs of the ruling alliance of JMM, Congress and the RJD. He also met his cabinet ministers. His wife Kalpana Soren, speculated to take over the chief minister's post, was also present. Security, meanwhile, tightened around the CM residence, the Raj Bhavan and the ED office in Ranchi. According to insiders, every legislator of the ruling alliance has been asked to stay put in the national capital amid the current situation. His party alleged political witch hunt. But Soren's opponents escalated their attack on the chief minister, citing his disappearance as the ED looked for him as part of investigations. छुप के थोड़े जाएगा कोई मुख्यमंत्री भाई हम मुख्यमंत्री छुप के जा रहा है छुप के भाग रहा है 
छुपे फिर रहा है ये तो आश्चर्य है The ED believes it has a watertight case against the Jharkhand Chief Minister. In all likelihood, when Hemant Sorin faces the ED tomorrow, he will be asked about his alleged involvement in illegal land holdings. That is the land mafia case the ED is investigating, and alleged mismanagement of funds linked to the bank accounts that are linked. to that of his wife these are the possible questions that the ed will be posing him with and it will be interesting to see that what is the ammunition that himan sorin has prepared this time with video journalist shailendra this is shia chatterjee for india today i want to go quickly across to get an update from india today's shia chatterjee she is in jharkhand uh, the jharkhand's capital ranchi uh, right outside the jharkhand mukti morcha office where hemant soren currently is uh, uh, shreya the enforcement directorate has made it clear that it has enough evidence to arrest uh, hemant soren they've been looking for him for over 2 days now he's reemerged in ranchi uh, you know he's held a mini press conference of his own is his arrest imminent is it likely to happen today what are you hearing Uh, well shiv that's uh, pretty much the mood on the ground right now that's what people are talking about that possibly he will be facing arrest if not why are we seeing multiple rounds of meeting that are being held at the cm office where all the mlas have been camped at the circuit house asked to come with suitcases so somewhere down the line this entire political uncertainty has also led to the jmm thinking there is a possibility of their own mlas defecting now today at 7 pm there will be a second round of meeting a first round of meeting had already been taken place at 2 pm post which we saw jmm uh, general secretary do a press conference they attacked the bjp went to an extent saying that the constitution does not ask us that if we go to a place by flight we have to return by the same so they are defending the entire move of heman sorin not surfacing while the ed was searching his residence and going in communicado suggesting that he did not do anything wrong so this is what the jmm stand right now is we'll have to wait and watch about the ed action because they did not wait for what heman sorin will be responding to on the either 29th or 31st notice they went ahead because they had fresh evidences fresh inputs directly uh, linking to him and sorin and we've seen that action taking place in delhi now that action will be moving to rachi in all likelihood okay thanks for that update um, uh, shreya we're going to keep a very firm watch because this is a story that india today broke shreya and team have been tracking it very very closely bringing you every single update before all others and we will break the news once that arrest and if that arrest actually does take place today so lots of big discussions taking place there in ranchi we'll keep you posted on that viewer the lalu bachao andolan has begun With elections now on the horizon and the India Alliance splintering under the weight of its own contradictions and egos, a whole galaxy of influential voices have united to form a wall around what is left of the opposition alliance. In the wake of the umpteenth shameless exit of Nitish Kumar, now Lalu is the towering hero for the anti-Modi ecosystem. a man to be praised protected and held aloft for all to see a man of principle and purpose who has withstood the marauding winds of hindutva and remained loyal to the dirt and dust of his dharma the anti modi ecosystem is now as you can imagine in top gear with tears in her eyes one voice says on social media lalu will go down in history as the most resilient and courageous politician who did not bend his principles Another claims history will remember Lalu since it has taken him immense courage to stand his ground and not bend. A veteran TV anchor invited Kapil Sibal onto his show where it was suggested that Lalu is a man of ideology. Now I am not a man of ideology for sure so I am going purely on the facts that my research team has provided me with. So while it is true that Lalu Prasad has remained steadfast in his opposition of the BJP you can't take that away from him. his principles resilience and courage on other matters have been well shall we say a little more malleable 
Let's talk facts since we're talking about facts. Lalu and his family are currently being interrogated in the land for jobs scam of Bihar, which says that Lalu and family, during his tenure as Union Railway Minister from 2004 to 2009, obtained monetary benefits by transferring landed property in their names in exchange for jobs in railway zones. In March last year, the Enforcement Directorate detected 600 crore rupees in assets after raids on the Lalu family. The second big scam Lalu and family are accused of is the IRCTC hotel scam in which Lalu is accused of favouring a private company in awarding operation and maintenance contracts for two IRCTC hotels in lieu of prime land in Patna. The CBI alleges that Lalu abused his position, favoured a particular hotel, acquired high-value premium land through a Benami company, and between 2010 and 2014, the ownership of the company was allegedly handed to Rabri and Tejasvi gradually. Then comes the famous fodder scam, which no doubt you've heard of, which Lalu is perhaps most known for. In 1997, Lalu was charged with forgery, criminal conspiracy and sections under the Prevention of Corruption Act in a scam allegedly worth up to 950 crore rupees or more. In February 2022, a CBI court sentenced Lalu to five years imprisonment in the fifth fodder scam case, there are so many, and imposed a fine of 60 lakh rupees on Lalu. According to an April 2022 update, the former Bihar chief minister has already been convicted in the previous four fodder scam cases related to Dumka, Deogar, Chaibasa, Banka, Bhagalpur treasuries. He is currently out on bail in the former three cases on the grounds that he has undergone half the sentence and in view of his deteriorating health. And let me say very clearly that all of us wish Laluji the best of health and a full recovery. There can be no two ways about that. But carrying on with the facts, in 1998, a disproportionate assets case was registered against Lalu. The income tax department, which claimed Lalu had pocketed 46 lakh rupees from the government treasury, also named Rabri as a co-accused for abetting the crime. They were acquitted in the case in 2006, but four years later, in, uh, 14 years later in 2020, the Supreme Court decided to revisit its 2010 verdict in the disproportionate assets case, in which it had held that the state government has no authority to file an appeal against acquittal in cases probed by central agencies. But these are just facts. They make no difference to cheerleaders too busy trumpeting Lalu's courage and resilience and his famous refusal to bend to the BJP and to central agencies and to Hindutva. But this isn't really about Lalu, viewer. Lalu is a politician. He's a neta of the old school. He will continue to play the astute politician. And probe agencies, frankly, will continue to do their work. It is not Lalu that I'm putting the spotlight on today, in case you thought I was. It is the desperation and hypocrisy of his defenders that I'm actually calling out. This new chapter of the Lalu Bachao Andolan is only a page from a larger playbook that appears to have been adopted in some ways by the India Alliance this election season, which is that corruption is acceptable as long as you remain steadfast in your mission to unseat Narendra Modi. Remember, Congress MP Dheeraj Sahu's 350 crore rupees in cash that was seized from his many properties in Odisha? You remember those viral images of all those rooms stuffed with cash? Well, you don't hear anyone from the Alliance talk about it now, do you? It was the biggest ever cash haul that this country has ever seen. But all you've seen is total silence about a sitting Congress MP. The DMK Sentil Balaji, total silence. And now with Heman Soren, who we've been speaking about, Total silence again. If the silence gets too deafening, simply claim that these are fake charges and vendetta politics and misuse of official apparatus. But when these parties are reminded that several of these investigations are court-ordered or court-monitored, back it goes to that familiar deafening silence. Which is why I always say, like with molestation, like with rape, with corruption too, we now live in a country of your corruption versus my corruption. Corruption is okay for the India Alliance as long as those perpetrating that corruption are anti-Modi and anti-BJP. That is the core of this hypocrisy. But none of that matters in election season. If you want to help yourself to public money, go ahead. If you wish to store 350 crore rupees in cash in your private properties, no problem. If you've got 200 crore in Benami transactions, 
Don't lose sleep over it. We got you. All you need to do is be unbending, courageous and principled in your fight against, not corruption, but Modi. Well, since we're on this topic of Bihar's former chief minister and the former first family of Bihar, well, former deputy chief minister and Lalu's son, Tejasvi Yadav has also been questioned by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with the Land for Jobs scam. This comes a day after his father, RJD Chief Lalu Prasad, was grilled by the Enforcement Directorate for nearly 10 hours. The family has called this a total outrage given Lalu's delicate health. Take a look. Trouble for Lalu family mounts. A day after RJD chief Lalu Prasad was grilled for nearly 10 hours, the Enforcement Directorate on Tuesday questioned his son and former Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, Tejasvi Yadav, in the Land for Jobs scam. The RJD is calling the ED pro political witch hunt by the BJP. <laughs> Lalu's party also slammed Chief Minister Nitish Kumar for changing his stand on the issue. Manimiya to kaha tha ki iski galti nahi hai. Isko to ulog phasa diya. To jab ulog phasa diya, to sir aap se agra hoga ki kuch bolii hai aaj. There's more trouble ahead for the Yadavs. Lalu's wife Rabdi Devi and their two daughters Hema Yadav and Misa Bharti have been asked to appear before a Delhi court on February 9th. The Congress has rallied behind their ally. Jab jab satta ka parivartan unhe karna hota hai, tab tab wo EDI ka, ED ka, CBI ka, CD ka beja istemal karte hain. Wo koi nayi baat nahi hai. Lalu ji ko sirf इसलिए परेशान किया जा रहा है उनके परिवार को इसलिए परेशान किया जा रहा है कि बीजेपी की वॉशिंग मशीन में धुलने के लिए तैयार नहीं The BJP is hailed ED action as a crackdown on corruption नौकरी के बदले जमीन लेने के ऐसे काम गरीबों का शोषण इन्होंने किया है गरीबों के नेता बनने के नाम पर किसी से जमीन लिया किसी से रिश्वत ली किसी से कैसे-कैसे लोगों ने तो जांच का सामना कर रहे हैं ईडी एक स्वतंत्र एजेंसी है उसका जवाब दे कानून अपना काम करेगा मोदी जी की जमाने में भ्रष्टाचार पर जीरो टॉलरेंस Corruption investigations against opposition leaders are gathering pace in election year the question now is whether any of them will be arrested in the run up to the general elections bureau report india today the Indian Navy has always been the biggest and most sought after force in the Indian Ocean region, but they've really, really risen up the ranks of respectability and reliability against one of the most dangerous places in the Indian Ocean region, that is the Persian Gulf and the coast of Somalia. Well, the Indian Navy has just carried out its second big rescue mission in just the last 48 hours by rescuing a pirated fishing vessel off the coast of Somalia. Navy warship INS Sumitra carried out this dangerous anti-piracy operation and rescued a vessel carrying 19 Pakistani nationals that was hijacked by 11 heavily armed pirates off the east coast of Somalia. Now, INS Sumitra is an offshore patrol vessel which had rescued an Iranian-flagged vessel called MV Iman from a piracy attempt just 24 hours earlier. It was sent once again by the Indian Navy to locate and intercept Al Naimi, which had been boarded by pirates and her crew had been taken hostage. The Indian Navy warship undertook confirmatory boarding uh, operations to sanitize and check on the well-being of the Pakistani crew who were being held captive by the pirates. So the second dangerous and successful rescue by the Indian Navy. These things can easily spiral out of control and go wrong, especially when the pirates are so well armed. But as you can see in the pictures that we've been showing you, they deployed a helicopter, they managed to board that fishing vessel and to make sure that all of those pirates were apprehended 
and the 19 Pakistani crew members were safe. In fact, the nationality of the crew has become a talking point on social media with people wondering why the Indian Navy has rescued Pakistanis. And I'm here to make it very clear that nationality does not matter in such rescue missions. That is something that does not figure at all in the consideration. The Indian Navy is a police force out in international waters and when called upon to rescue, it does that. Joining us to throw some light on this is Captain DK Sharma. Uh, he's our favorite voice on maritime affairs. He's also the well-known former spokesperson of the Indian Navy. Captain, very, uh, very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for being with India today. How difficult are such rescues? It involved a helicopter and boarding the ship with armed pirates on board, Captain. How difficult, how delicate, how risky? Well, it is a very, very uh, tricky situation uh, where you have the pirates on board these small wishing vessels and they do carry very, very sophisticated small arms, which means yeah. AK-47s and the likes. So uh, the ship which goes for a rescue, for example, in this case, Sumitra, they have to first uh, send a helicopter, which uh, gives them adequate warnings that uh, now you are being, you know, uh, prodded or uh, being uh, mm. stopped by Anna Sumitra. And uh, they have the report uh, or they, they uh, tell them that uh, they have a, a kind of information that this is uh, illegal act which you're doing. So please come out on board uh, to a clear area and please keep your weapons to the side. Yes. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, intricacies which are involved because these are very, very heavily armed people and they can cause harm and a loss of life is absolutely exactly. not acceptable. Mm. So that is where the, the complications arise. So uh, the ships, normally the ship which is carrying out this duty of rescue has to be very, very careful and... Uh, it has to be a very, very graduated uh, kind of uh, action which the ship takes and make sure that there is no uh, harm mm. uh, to the bona fide crew of the boat. Correct. And uh, this is how it is uh, progressed. That is why it takes a little bit of time, three, four, five hours. Mm. And once uh, the pirates or the people who have boarded the fishing vessel illegally, then they are uh, brought to the clear area and then the ship normally sends a boat mm. in which we mm. have our armed boarding party right. and which goes and renders the boat or the hijack uh, craft safe. And uh, and then they take charge of these uh, pirates and uh, mm. then send them back to wherever they have come from. And, you know, I, I did say it myself, but I want you to clarify on this as well, Captain Sharma. The fact that the crew, uh, you know, are Pakistani makes no difference in a rescue like this, right? Uh, you know, a rescue in international waters doesn't see nationality. You see, it is a humanitarian cause. Yeah, they have exactly. uh, put out a kind of a distress call that they are under a kind of attack and they need help. Mm. So, uh, these things are not uh, taken into consideration that who is the nationality, which uh, part of the world the boat belongs or which part of the uh, you know, world the crew Correct. belongs to. First is to render help, which has been sought by them on international open frequencies. Mm. Uh, these things are not uh, considered at that point in time. And neither is that, uh, you know, vessel which is being approached or which has been, uh, you know, uh, hijacked by them, is mm. of a belligerent nation. So it is yeah. uh, to protect the sea lanes of communication and the economics that these kinds of uh, actions are taken. Thank you, Captain Sharma, for, uh, you know, giving us and throwing some light on what is a very, very delicate rescue operation, the second in two days. And I'm sure the Indian Navy is going to have its hands full because this is a season of piracy. It's a season of tension in the Indian Ocean region, especially in that area with, you know, drones being used by the Houthis to attack ships. So the Indian Navy is on action stations in the Persian Gulf and those waters. And we wish all of our sailors and all of those on board the very best and to stay safe and happy hunting.